My name is Eric with Brunswick Firearms Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about the Kinect, the Mete MC9. We will be going over how to field strip this firearm for cleaning. We'll also go over the length of the trigger pull, the reset position of the trigger pull for rapid firing. We will also uh, go over the what the weight of the trigger pull is. I have a wheeler gauge here that will tell us that. Um, so we got a lot of stuff to cover here. But let's go ahead and jump on in. Let's go ahead and tell you this is how it comes. Hard case, plastic. There are two little, you can see right here, this little hole and this little hole. You can actually put padlocks on those and lock this firearm up in its case, which is really nice if you're traveling or, or any of that stuff. So basically you would take these two slides, slide them over to the outside, left and right. Go ahead and open her up. And as you can see, there are a lot of little gadgets that come with this thing. At the bottom down here, we have a punch tool. This is to help change the different uh, grip sizes. The back straps here, you can see there's two here and there's one on the firearm. So you got three different sizes uh, that you can adjust your grip. And again, this is the punch tool to remove the pin out of that out of those back straps to, to remove them and then of course to install the pin back in to hold them in place. Uh, you can see there is a brass brush here as well as a, a cleaning rod right here. So you can clean your barrels out. This guy right here, this is pretty neat. This is not a little toy or anything that comes with it. This is actually a screwdriver that comes with it and I'll show you how that thing works. Um, so basically, it's a miniature firearm. If you turn it upside down, you can slide the base plate forward on the bottom of the grip of this thing. It comes off just like that. And inside of here, there'll be some screws. There'll be um, little star washers that you can lose. So you gotta be real careful when you dump them out because they are small. Um, but there's also screwdriver tips in here for different sizes. I'll go ahead and dump them out. So basically that's it right there. Uh, as you can see, they're different sizes. There's three different sizes here for your uh, screwdrivers. So I'm just gonna set this down for now. Actually, I'm gonna put them back in because I don't wanna lose them because they, the uh, star washers are pretty small. So let me go ahead and drop those back in there. And we'll come back to that in a little bit and I'll show you how to, uh, what it's for. So, all right, so. If you flip this over here, you can see that there is a manual in here. The manual will go over a lot of stuff that we're going to cover in this video, like field stripping the firearm, loading it, unloading it, uh, that kind of stuff. But that's all in the manual. The warranty information will be in the back. Uh, these guys have a limited lifetime warranty, which is really nice. But as you can see right here, you can see the Canic Mete MC9 right there. It, is, it does come with a holster, as you can see. Now this is a interior waistband holster for concealment, so it would go inside of the waistband. Uh, you can see the belt clips here. Basically, you know, it would go inside of your waistband, your belt would go through here, or these are clips so you can slide your, the, the, the rim of your pants up in there if you don't have a belt on. Uh, but let's go ahead and pull this guy out. Want to make sure that we're clear and free so let's go ahead and rack her open look feel yes we are clear magazine is empty as well uh, so let's go ahead and close that back up now first thing i noticed that this slide that guide spring it there's a lot of tension on it so it does take a little bit of effort to rack this back it is pretty stout now as far as the slide release which you can see is on both sides right here this long bar and then there's one on this side uh, the long bar is actually kind of nice because it helps give you a little leverage to release the slide. But I will tell you, when you release it, that spring is pretty tight, a lot of tension on it. So this is going to try to slam forward. So you really want to kind of hold it and let it let it back forward a little gentle. Um, that spring is, is stout on there. But let's go ahead and remove this warning label. And I want to show you, continue showing you what else is coming in this box. So... Uh, before we break this gun down. Again, you have your holster. There is a trigger guard right here, a, a, a lock. So basically, this that silver piece, you would use this tool on the other side right there, um, would go and that little silver screw would unscrew. It's basically a bolt that goes through and clamps and holds it together. So once you take that apart, the actually two pieces will come apart and then one goes on both sides, one on each side of the trigger guard, and then it would squeeze onto it like that 
blocking your trigger so this gun would not be able to be used. So that's how that works. It's not the best one. It's a little cheap lock, but it does work. Um, there is a magazine inside. You can see the base plate is flush. So that would um, make your gun a little bit more compact for concealment. This is a 12 rounder. Yes, this is a 12 round mag. It does come with an extended magazine right here, as you can see, and this is a 15 round magazine. Also the, the extended base plate here, it does have texture around it on the two sides in the front to help with your grip when it's, when it's in there, when, when your magazine's in the firearm. So that's pretty nice. There is a speed loader. This is not the best speed loader in the world, but it does work. I have another one here that I really like to use. Uh, I'll be using that to load the firearm, but I just want to show you that it does come with a speed loader. Basically, you would put it over the magazine, press it down, slide your bullet in, release it, and then finish seating your bullet back. So you would push the bullet back so it sits flush on the back side of that magazine. That's how that would work. All right, so let's jump right on up. Also, there is an additional base plate here. This is a base plate where it's flush in the back, but it does have the front side extension. So you can actually remove the one that's flush and then you can install this guy giving you an extra uh, finger placement on the front side. So it doesn't have the heel of the palm extended back, just the front side for your finger placement. It should make it a little bit more comfortable um, when you're holding that firearm because I can tell you, this is a really short grip, so you, you really can't get your bottom finger on, on the grip, but with that extended finger one, you would have the opportunity of getting that, that third finger placement on there. Um, I can tell you also that one of the, the things I wish it had, the, the texture of the grip is actually not bad. The only thing that I have about it is it's, it's, it's so limited. It stops here. Like it's almost just a little bit of halfway. I just wish it would have came up higher, especially on my thumb side, because it it is pretty slick. So I'm not sure, you know, if it's a hot day and sweaty and stuff like that, the grip might not be a, as good, on, especially for your thumb. So I just wish the texture was higher up on, on the grip. There is texture all the way around on all four sides, which is nice, but I just feel like I would have more control if there was more texture up more for that grip. So that's one of the, probably the only thing I would see um, that I wish was different on this firearm. Now the slide you can see has serrations on the front. It does have it in the back as well. The front ones are definitely deeper than the back ones. The back ones could be a little bit deeper, um, but they're still not bad. It does help out with that grip for that slide, especially with that tension on that spring. It is, I mean, it is pretty tight. The sights, it does have the white dot sight on the front. Uh, on the back side, it's just black all the way around. Um, you know, it's still not bad. They sit, the, the back, it's actually the, the groove here for your sight that you would line the front up in. It's actually kind of deep, so that's kind of nice. They are driftable, so you can drift it left and right, but you cannot do for elevation. So you can't raise them or lower them. You can only drift them side to side for windage. Um, but still pretty nice that you do have that feature. Um, the slide release, I'm not sure if I told you guys, but the slide release uh, is on both sides. You can see here and here. It is a little longer. That really helps out, giving you a little bit of leverage to help release this slide. Now with that spring being so tight in there, this is gonna to tend to try to slam forward. So you wanna kinda of hold it so it don't slam forward because that spring is tight, like I said. Uh, but it is nice that these the, the, the slide release is so long because that does give you a little bit more leverage to release that. Uh, magazine release comes on the left-hand side here. Basically, you would just press that button in and the magazine would come out. There are no thumb safeties on this model, as you can see. It does have the trigger blade safety, which is in the center of the trigger here. And the point of that is, is if your trigger was to accidentally snag on the side or something, the trigger should not be able to be pulled to, to allow the gun to go off. The, the idea is that this trigger blade in the center must be pressed in which your finger completely on the trigger would press that in when you pull the trigger back, allowing you to fire the gun. 
Um, and as I said in the past, when it comes to these safeties, remember they are man-made. They can fail, so don't put 100% in them. Uh, don't trust them 100%. Um, but that's a typical, you see that a lot on your Glocks and some of your Smiths now you're seeing them. The slide release, we're gonna go ahead and talk about, well, let me go ahead and show you up top here. This is optic ready. So basically you would pull these two screws out, this plate would come off and then you can install a um, red dot. That is what this little screwdriver with those tips are for. So you would put it in there, put the right size and you can undo those screws and, and get it out. Um, let me slide this over out of the way. Let's go ahead, before we go into the trigger pull length and pull, our trigger length pull, the reset for grab fire, and also the, the weight of the pull. Let's go ahead and show you how to break this gun down for field stripping. Um, also, there is, just before I do that, there is a um, Picatinny rail on the front bottom here, uh, so you can put a, a laser flashlight or a combo or what have you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how to break this gun down, how to field strip it for cleaning. Uh, one thing you would have to do is, I know this is controversial, but you do have to dry fire this gun. Uh, you can see on the back side of the slide, there's a little red dot uh, that is exposed. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. That's an indicator that this, is, this gun has been racked and it's in fire position. So you do have to dry fire this gun to, to be able to break the slide down. So let's go ahead and dry fire this firearm. All right, so as you can see now, the red dot is gone, showing that this gun is not racked. Um, so the way you would break this gun down, you can see there's a tab on each side. There's one right here, and there's one right there. Now on top of this one on the slide, you can see there's like a little cutout just above it, in front of it, about right there. Uh, so basically you would have to pull this back, let's see, and you would line that up and then that's where you would pull these two tabs downward. So you have to hold it back slightly, pull those tabs down at the same time and then your slide should come off on the front allowing you to field strip this. So let's go ahead and do it. The way I found it easier to do is I take the grip, place it in here and I like to wrap my hands around the top of it like this and then I can kind of push forward with my thumb like that and then I can line those up, press it down Oh, I gotta dry fire it again. So there we go. That should come off just like that. So now we have a slide off. Um, it is pretty dry, so make sure you do lube your gun up. You don't want to put too much on it, um, but do lube your gun because it is it is really dry. Now here is the uh, slide and barrel and the guide rod and the guide spring. You can see here is exposed. Uh, you can see on here, this front side has a larger spring than the rear side. So um, the, the, the wider part of it goes towards the front. So remember that when you're putting this firearm back together. So basically you're gonna grab that, press it forward, and then relieve that tension and it'll come right out. So as you can see, the front side of it is wider than the back spring. Also the back side is silver and the front side is a black end plate. So the silver and the smaller end goes towards the internal side of the firearm and the wider and the black uh, end here goes towards the front of the firearm. So that's how you would remove that. Uh, now we have the barrel. Basically the barrel will kind of, you kind of press up and out about a 45 degree angle like that and it will pull out. Now you can go in, you can clean that guide rod, you can clean that spring, you can go in uh, and clean your barrel really good, and of course now you can clean up all nice, all get it nicely cleaned in here from your residue from when you're firing from the powder. Um, so that's how you would break it down. Now, um, on the inside here, since we have the top off, you can see down into the magazine well, so you can clean all the springs up here for your fire mechanisms. Um, so get all that nice and cleaned up. Again, this is really dry, so be sure you uh, check it when yours comes in to see if you need to lube it up or not. Now, to put this back together, you're gonna to turn your barrel upside down. This is the front of the barrel, this is the rear. Um, we're gonna take our barrel. You can see there's two holes on the end. The bigger one is for the tip of your barrel, and the top one is for that guide rod to sit in there. So basically, holding it upside down, you can see your um, barrel, barrel here. Now you can see, hopefully you can see it. It's notched out right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this, 
piece right here is notched out. That's where this back side of this guide rod is going to sit on that barrel once you get it in there. So let's go ahead, again, about a 45 degree angle. Line it up into there so the barrel goes through the bigger hole and then slide it back and you can see that it sits in place. Now when you turn this upside down, you notice I have my finger on top because the barrel will fall out because the guide rod and spring's not in it, which holds that in place. Now, the way you would do this, again, the black tip goes towards the front, the smaller spring and the silver end goes towards the internal side of the, the, the slide, towards the back of the gun. So basically we're gonna put it in this second hole here and then we're gonna press forward on this spring just a little bit until it pops in place like that. So now it is ready to reassemble. So make sure we got everything set in here. All right, now when you're putting this slide back on, it's not like a typical one. You know, we've talked in the past that basically you would put, put it on right here. You have two tabs here, and then you have two slotted areas that go, runs down on the internal side of this of the uh, slide. So you would put it here and slide it all the way back. With this firearm, you cannot do that because of this guy right here sticking up. You can see on the rear end, there is not a slot for it to pass through. So if you were to come from the front all the way back, it's gonna hit that and you are not gonna get the slide back on this frame. So basically what you're gonna to have to do, see got a piece of fuzz here for somewhere, is you're gonna sit this back. You can see, hopefully you can see it. Let's see if you can. Right behind the guide rod here, you can see it's kind of slotted out a little bit on the bottom of the slide here. Right about there, hopefully you can see that. That's where these tabs are gonna line up and then it will kind of drop on and then we're gonna go back. So this piece here is sitting on the front side of the back plate there. So basically, try to do this on the camera. We're gonna take it, see how I went over that back piece. Now I, I got those tabs lined up so the, it's sitting flush on the frame now. So now we can press back and we should be able to, yep, so you can see the indicators in place there showing that it's right, we're gonna dry fire. Um, and yes, everything is operating now. Now for the rest of this, I'm going to be using these snap caps. I know they say that it is safe to dry fire these firearms. In fact, if you go to the Kinnick website, they actually show them dry firing it and practicing on targets, dry firing in, inside. Um, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just a habit. I always like snap caps. I just, there's a lot of force coming forward from those firing pins and I'm, I'm just always scared it's going to mess something up. But anyways, Let's go ahead and see what the trigger pull, which I know what the trigger pull is, but I'm gonna to try to hold it closer to the camera so you can see me pulling it and actually see the length of it and hear the click when it goes off. Uh, again, I do have a, uh, another speed loader here I'm gonna use. I'm gonna load four of these guys up, these snap caps. Again, these are snap caps with springs in them to um, the spring inside of these will actually catch all the momentum coming forward with from the firing pin to protect your firing pin and the, the internal mechanisms there of the firing system so um, let me go ahead and get this last one in so now we we have snap caps loaded i'm going to rack it now and get one in the chamber so now we have one in the chamber it, you can see my indicator here the red dot it shows that it is loaded so First thing we're going to do, let's see what the, the trigger length is, and then we'll hold it in place and see what the reset is um, for the second fire to see how good these should be in rapid firing. And then we'll get to the wheeler gauge for the weight. So we are ready to go. So I'm going to hold this fairly close to the camera. I'm going to pull the trigger back and let's see what the uh, trigger length is. So here we go. So currently, I just have the trigger blade safety pressed. I don't have the trigger plate uh, pressed back at all, just the trigger blade safety. So here we go with the pull. Uh, it's kind of a medium trigger pull. It's a uh, little, it's kind of long. It's not extremely long, but it is a little long. Um, I would definitely want it to be a little shorter in my opinion. Again, everybody has their different opinions. That's just me. Uh, it is a little long on that trigger pull. So let me go ahead. You can see I still have the trigger pull back in place. That's because we have to keep it engaged so we can test the reset position. But first I want to get another snap cap in here because I got to re-rack it. So here we go. So now we have another one in place. I still have the trigger play, 
uh, pressed in or pulled as you can see. So now I'm going to slowly release it and see how long the reset position is for that rapid fire to get that second shot off. So here we go. So the reset position is not too long at all. Um, it's actually pretty good, which allows that, that second shot to come off. There's just a lot of dead space with the initial trigger pull, which there always is. It just seems like this one has a little bit more than your typical or uh, in some of the other firearms. So the, the initial trigger pull is fairly long. The reset is not that long. Of course, once you do the, hit the reset, you can pull back right away and get that second fire off. So I don't think that rapid fire will be that bad on this gun once you get past the first initial pull. Um, I think it, it's, it's actually pretty decent. It's, it's not bad at all. All right, so now let's see what the weight of the trigger pull is. So I need to get that snap cap out. Got another one loaded in. And again, this is a Wheeler gauge or yeah, the gauge here for the trigger pull, see what the weight is. Uh, so basically when I pull it on, it shows here the numbers of what the pull is by poundage and ounces. This top part right here actually goes on the trigger. This is actually the sensor when I pull on the trigger to that, that does the weigh in to see what the, the weight is. So let's go ahead and see what it is. Uh, again, in the past, you know, I've used them on, on my other videos. I do, for instance, I always tell you guys this, just, just so you understand why. Uh, again, for this gauge here, I always get a, a more accurate reading if I'm uh, mid to a little bit above the mid, if possible, on the trigger height or length of it. So the, the, the sensor here, I like to either get in the center or up uh, a little higher on it. Now, in this case, it does have the trigger blade safety. So you remember, we've got to have it low enough where it presses that trigger blade safety in so the trigger will be allowed to be pulled. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Let me go ahead and delete that. All right, so one of the things also I noticed on this, the trigger guard here, there's not a lot of space right there. Um, it is kind of small, so if you had gloves on or something, you might have a hard time getting your finger in there. As you can see when I put the gauge in here, I actually have to press the trigger back just slightly to get it in there. Just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got here. Ready? So that one, it's about four and a half it looks like. Let's see about getting another one here. I like to do two readings and I take the, the average between the two. I'm going to rack it, put the last snap cap in. So I got my last snap cap in place. Uh, again, I like to do two readings and then get an average. I seem to get a little bit better reading that way. Uh, so let's go ahead and reposition this. It is tight getting it in there. So here we go. I'm going to pull. So that was a 4.6. Uh, 4.6 and a half ounce there, four pounds, six and a half ounces. First one was a 4.5, so you got about a 4.5, 4.6 um, reading there. So not a real bad, not a real heavy uh, trigger pull. Four and a half is not bad. Uh, I like getting on down to about three and a half, but uh, four and a half is uh, actually not bad. So overall, again, the trigger pull is a little long for the initial pull, and then once you get that initial pull out of the way, the reset's not that, that long, so you can get that second fire off and so on and so on for rapid firing. So not bad, not really bad. Like I said, just get past that first initial pull. And I do know that trigger, the first initial trigger pull is always a little longer. It just seems to be a little bit longer on this model compared to some of the other firearms. So again, the Kinnick Mete, the MC9, Overall, not a bad gun. The slide is really tough to slide it back. Um, so, you know, that's one thing to keep in mind if you have arthritis or some uh, muscle issues in your hands, it might be a little difficult for you to rack this gun. And again, if you can't rack it, you can't use it, the gun is pointless to you. Um, uh, also the back strap, here's that back strap. Let me pull that punch tool. So there's that punch tool here. So basically there's a little hole right here and inside of there is a pin. This punch tool is, is to push that pin out. It'll pop out the other side, then you can remove it and put another one of the other sizes on. So that's that's how that would work. Um, but yeah, the Kinnick Mete MC9, very good gun. I, I like it. Um, 
you know, like I said, the, the spring in it is a little tight, but other than that, it's actually a really nice gun. Um, hopefully you got some good information out of this if you're thinking about purchasing one. If um, you did get some good information out of this video, please be sure to subscribe and like the video and share the video. Uh, that helps our channel to keep going and uh, it's, it's probably our biggest thank you for doing these videos. Again, I hope you got some great information out of this. My name's Eric with Brunswick Firearms Reviews.